Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, Mendelian genetics. We're only going to cover um, one, not exception, but one other type of inheritance aside from complete dominance. Everything I've talked about so far is complete dominance, right? If you have at least one dominant allele, you look dominant. So homozygous dominant, heterozygous dominant, look phenotypically exactly the same. Homozygous recessive is the one that looks different. You will have two phenotypes, right, but three different genotypes. That's complete dominance. That's all we've talked about so far. The only exception to that that we're going to do in here is blood type, just because it's fun, right, and we can play the Mori Povich paternity testing using the Punnett squares for that too. Okay, it's just another example. And so, in, and, and blood typing gives us two examples of other weird, not weird genetic things, but different things that can happen. So for the complete dominant step, the traits I've talked about so far, and all the diseases, cystic fibrosis, albinism, lobster claw, hitchhiker thumb, all of the tongue rolling, all of those have only two alleles that exist in the world, in the gene pool, okay? You're either a tongue roller or you're not. You either have attached or detached, right? You either have the albinism allele or a normal allele. For blood types, there's more than two alleles out there in the world, in the gene pool. Any one of us can only have two of them at a time. Why can we only have two alleles at a time? Why can't we have, because we're diploid, and because of our number one and number one chromosome allele, allele, the only individuals who have three alleles of any gene are like a trisomy 21. Yeah, then on that, where those three chromosomes, they have three alleles. Right? But that's not where the blood type resides anyway, so it doesn't affect blood typing. Right? So even though there's more alleles out there, all of us can still only have two of them. But that does provide for more phenotypic variants in our population, right, than just A or B, right? What are all the blood types that we have? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right there. Yeah, you can be A, you can be B, you can be A, B, or you can be O. If we only had two alleles, we can't have that many <laughs> phenotypes. It doesn't, the math doesn't work out. And so as it turns out, there are three alleles for the blood types. And this is just our ABO blood types. It's not the positive and the negative. We're going to do that on the next slide. But just type A, type B, type AB, and type O. So there's three different alleles. And because there's more than two alleles, they use the superscript to designate the different alleles rather than, because there's only capitals and lowercase. We don't have another kind of, you know, cursive you know, for, to, to denote which ones these are. And in this case, there is a dominance and a recessive nature to these, but two of the alleles are dominant. They're not, they're co-dominant to each other, and they're dominant over one of the other ones. And so we can't just give them, you know, A or B or O as our alleles, because in genetics, that suggests those are different genes, right? All the alleles always have the same letter, big B, little b, big R, little r. So if you have more than two alleles, you have to do something else to show that the I means it's a single gene. The subscript or the lowercase means it's a different allele, right? Because this would get very confusing. You'd think they're multiple genes. And when we do the two gene cross, you'll see why you can't. Anytime there's more than one letter, it suggests there's more than one gene, not just the allele. So the alleles need to have the same letter. So the capital I's are dominant, and they show them with the capital A, and little i is recessive. So type O, oh, that fell off my little slide. Type O blood is the homozygous recessive, little i, little i. A is dominant over little i or O, B is dominant over O, 
and A and B are co-dominant. Neither one wins. So if you have one allele you got from mom, woo, bless you, with the A allele and an allele you got from dad at the B allele, your blood type is AB. You have both. Neither one masks the other one. So they, they have to be co-dominant to each other. Because right, they both show up. Remember, recessive means it doesn't show up in the phenotype. Both A and B show up in the phenotype. Right, your blood type is AB. To be type A, you can either be homozygous A or heterozygous A. Right, big, big I A, big I A, or big I A, little I. Right, so if your dad is type O and your mom is type A, you could be, you know at least one of your alleles has to be little i, because that's all dad had to give away, and if he's really your father, you've got one. <laughs> okay, and then mom could have either given you an A or a little i, depending on if she was homozygous or heterozygous. Right? And then type B is the same way, either homozygous or heterozygous is possible. So if we were going to do a Punnett square, which we're all going to do, and then we're going to screenshot and upload, because you know how we are. Let's do, well, let's just do that one. Let's do type A by <coughs> type O. Okay, we'll do heterozygous A to O. Fill out your little square and you'll screenshot and upload. So this is just a standard one gene cross, one normal. Right? There's another allele out there, but you see that each person only has, right, you can't be I-I-I I, or I-I-I-D. You can only, only have two. You only have that pair of homologous chromosomes to hold them. And what are all the possible blood types of the offspring of this couple. You should write the real thing just so you don't get confused, but yeah, if you just write a big capital For the uploads, it doesn't matter. But they'll be shown like, you know, like this on the exam, so just as long as you know. So then what's this guy? Oops, sorry. If, if, so if I ask for blood type, right, for this, these guys, you'd say their blood type is A, right? Their genotype is heterozygous A. And what about these guys? Yeah, their blood type is O. So this would be like a test cross, right? If you didn't know what, if mom just blood type A, the red cross just tells you blood type A. They don't tell you homozygous, heterozygous, right? But, and dad's O, so then that couple decides to have 10 kids, right, to make sure their numbers are good enough for probability. And if at least one of the offspring is type O, they know mom has to be heterozygous. Now they'd have to have a hundred kids to really prove it or support it. If there's at least one O, even if they have two kids, you know what mom is. But if, you know, if everybody turns out to be type A, you'd have to have at least a hundred kids to be sure. And then that would just be wrong. Yep, please. Whatever the first one of today's deal. Yeah, it's implied, but it would be accurate to say it's homozygous O, yeah. Because there is some weird old crap out there that we're not going to talk about that you can be type O and really have a, an allele for something else. That allele's mutated. It's like the Bombay phenotype or some crazy shit, but we're not going to talk about that. That's other fun, nerdy genetic stuff. Right. And then we could also play little games like 
Mar let's see. I always screw this up, too. Um, let's see, Mom. <laughs> okay, so we don't know that who the dad is. Okay, we're playing who's your daddy. And so we know mom. Oh, well, actually, well, yeah, let's just know what mom is. Okay. Now I know what I'm doing. Sorry, I'm having a moment. Okay. Yeah, and, and again, which side you put stuff on, it really doesn't matter. By convention, yeah, I kind of always put it down there. I don't know why, but it, it doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah, so let's Moodle upload the one you guys just did, and then we'll Moodle upload this one too. So this would be like a question I might ask on an exam or, you know, some fun question. Okay. So a mom who is type B has a baby who's, so we know this baby exists. This is a baby. Baby with type O blood. Okay, and she's got five potential fathers lined up behind the curtain. <laughs> right? And they're trying to prove that they're not the father or whatever. Okay? And so then our question is, so because the baby's type O, we know mom has to be heterozygous B. Why do we know that? Yeah, because she gave one away, so she had to have it. Right? One of this, this I, we'll say is this I. One of the I's had to come from mom. The other I, you know, has to come from dad. So the father has to have at least one little I. So which of the, which blood types of the men behind the curtain are, they cannot prove they're not it. They're totally screwed if they're type, if they're, well, if they're type AB, they're off the hook. Yeah, right. If they're type AB, are they off the hook? Yeah. yeah, because they can't give up a little, right? So the two guys behind the curtain that are type AB, you know, do a victory dance and leave. Right. Who, who totally, there's no possible way they could even argue at all that they're not. Right. Mo oh, oh, for sure, right? Because O's got two little eyes. You, you're, there's no way you could say, oh, but I'm homozygous A. Right. Anybody who's type A blood could be this or could be this. So then we'd have to do PCR sequencing or something else to get this guy off, you know, that guy off the hook. Yeah, type B and type A are screwed too. On Maury Povich, they're not going to be doing any molecular biology. So they're still, those three are the candidates, right? And so them, so they're not usually super smart there. And so they'll argue, but I'm type A. I can't have a type O baby. And then you guys would be like, uh-uh, no, you didn't, because they could be heterozygous. And you if they're, if they're O, then he can't argue at all. You have two little eyes, it's totally possible for you to be the dad. But the type A person might argue, but I'm type A, how could I possibly have type O? And then we explain to them that if you're heterozygous A, if you were homozygous A, then you're off the hook. But you can't tell that just from your Red Cross card of blood type. Right? You have to do more than that. Yes. Yes. Just write something that makes sense. So the the type A guy. So how could the type A guy prove or support or whatever that he's homozygous A? Are there any people out there related to him that he could bring in a blood type card and a specific blood type would totally get him off the hook? His parents. What do both his parents have to be for him to be homozygous A? But we don't know because they're just a type listed on their stupid Red Cross card. Because we, we only know phenotype from that. What phenotype, which tells their genotype, would they have to be for him to be A and get two A's? 
<laughs> AB, right? They both have to be AB. Let's, let's do a square, shall we? I love it. So here's our man who's, who's you know, he's type A. And we want to know what his parents are that can make sure dad has to have an A and mom has to have an A. Right. Yeah, do the second upload on that one. Right? Sure, what the hell? <laughs> I know, it's points, people. Right. Can you take, yes, take a picture of the screen and upload it. <laughs> I don't want to draw anymore, guys. You're killing me. No. But we wouldn't know just by their type. Yes, they could in reality be homozygous dominant A, homozygous dominant A, he can only be homozygous dominant A. But, what, but if all he has is their Red Cross blood type card, it just says A. It's that stupid A problem. Like, I'm type A and I don't know if I'm homozygous or heterozygous. And you know that keeps me up at night. I can't sleep thinking about my genotype. Yeah. Yeah. So if they're bo if they both have the Red Cross card that says A B, they don't have any eyes to give him. He must have gotten, and he's type A. He had to have been, right? His siblings, right? He could have siblings that are A B. He could have siblings that are B. He could have siblings that are A B. But we know he's type A. Right, so, sure, we can upload it, what the hell. I think there's three today. <laughs> if we have another, I'll just make another one. I have the power right here at Moodle to add an upload. So does this make sense? Yes, no? No, you do not. Right, yeah, so now he does a victory dance and walks off the show. So those are the kind of questions, right? You have all the tools. You know dominant and recessive. You know the blood types and what they mean. And then I present you a situation where you have to think about all the stuff you know to come up with your answer. You might have to draw a couple squares or at least one, right? I can give you the, the phenotype or the genotype of the child. You tell me the parents. I can give you the parents. You tell me the child. Tell me the grandparents. That's a good question. Um, his question is, can all, can all dominant genes be co-dominant? If there's multiple alleles, there's usually some co-dominance going on or a dominant series where this one's dominant over this one, but not over that one, which is dominant over both of them. But we're not going to do that in here. We get to those more complicated situations when we get to 360. <coughs> and then the other 